Hi everyone, I am Elina Israelian, a data scientist from Easy the Mark's AI team. Uh, and in Easy the Mark, we provide products for email security and deliverability. And today I want to walk you through the AI powered solutions that are uh, made, uh, that are built in Easy the Mark for the sake of, sake of cybersecurity. Uh, in this talk, you will learn about AI challenges and uh, the challenges that it has in the field of cybersecurity. Then we will go to uh, the topic of preventing spoofing attacks and uh, some data specifics that are within this challenge. Uh, then we will move on to one of the most important topics in cybersecurity, the web phishing detection, by discussing its data specifics. Uh, then we will go to the data pre-processing of it uh, and we will move on to the feature extraction and the challenges within it. And then we will uh, check the uh, final results that we have uh, at Easy the Mark and uh, see the uh, accuracies and the metrics that it has already on the production. So, AI and cyber attacks. Uh, if we divide the uh, uh, machine learning uh, into those main fields, uh, the supervised uh, learning, the unsupervised learning, self-supervised learning and uh, reinforcement learning, we see that uh, uh, AI has a lot of uh, topics, a lot of gaps to cover in the field of cybersecurity. For example, in case of unsupervised learning, uh, we have the problem of anomaly detection, spoofing attacks, phishing detection, uh, or spoofing risk uh, uh, estimation. And uh, this is uh, most, in most of the cases, is a uh, task for unsupervised learning because uh, we, in general, do not have much data and much labeled data in this uh, field. Uh, for the supervised learning, we have the uh, problems of phishing detection again, uh, because in some cases you have uh, labeled data, we have spoofing detection, uh, also uh, the data quality check, spam filters, uh, and so on and so forth. Uh, for the case of uh, reinforcement learning, for example, network monitoring. The patterns always change and you need to detect the zero day attacks and for these uh, you need a reinforcement learning to be up to date, to always uh, train your model to know the new uh, challenges. Uh, also the adversarial attacks, uh, searching agents and decision agents for uh, detection of uh, those cyber attacks. For self-supervised learning, uh, we uh, want to mention the problems of predictive maintenance, uh, the lookalike attacks and email body classification because in those cases you have uh, some techniques, techniques to uh, label your data and not having uh, labeled data is not a problem. Um, and in Easy the Mark we provide solutions for uh, spoofing risk elimination, spoofing attack detection, anomaly detection, lookalike attack detection, data quality check, and of course web phishing detection uh, on which we will mainly focus uh, in this talk. And I want to show a uh, uh, couple of solutions that we have and the first one is the spoofing attack detection, namely lookalike and uh, display name spoofing uh, detection. First of all, let's understand what are spoofing attacks. Uh, we can see here uh, an email account of John Smith and this is the display name spoofing uh, and this is the display name and here is the email of John Smith at example.com and uh, in case of the name spoofing attacks uh, the attacker tries to uh, have a very similar display name uh, but a different email. The thing is that the users, the people who get uh, a new email, they do not in general pay attention on the email uh, that they are receiving uh, from and they only look at the display name and think, okay, this is the real John Smith and uh, that's how they are getting attacked. In the case of lookalike attacks, uh, you, uh, if you look uh, at the display, display name, it can match and uh, if you look at the email, it 
uh, uh, at the first glance, it can also match. But if you look farther, you can see, you can notice some uh, letter substitutions, some uh, letter emissions. And this is how the lookalike uh, attacks are being done. So for example, in this case, the letter uh, M is substituted by the letters R and N. So uh, if you look in at uh, the screen of the phone, you will not notice this. And you will get attacked by the, uh, uh, by, by the lookalike attacks. So we provide solution uh, to, pre, uh, to, to, to help your employees' uh, emails to be secure uh, from uh, display name spoofing and your domains to be secure from lookalike attacks uh, by providing solutions that use both NLP and uh, computer vision techniques. And the reason behind uh, this is that we have a lot of data specifics, a lot of challenges that need to be addressed. Uh, oops. So, for example, uh, one data specific that we have here is uh, data labeling. We do not have much data, and it is not easy to uh, gather a lot of data uh, for, the, for the spoofing attacks. Also, there are millions of permutations for the display name spoofing. For example, for, for example the John Smith can be written as Smith John, and this also can be considered as name spoofing. There are millions of tricky methods uh, uh, to substitute the letters from your domain, and this is another challenge. And uh, last but not least that I want to mention is that there are uh, different alphabets that look very similar, and you can't tell the difference. Uh, and this is the main reason that we also use computer vision techniques, not only NLP, to cover all of those data specifics. But uh, for the solution, I don't want to go much in details uh, in the solution because we have a lot of to talk about the URL and website phishing detection. So uh, website and uh, phishing uh, website phishing detection, it is very important because if we look at this phishing statistics, we can see that uh, the number of phishing websites uh, increased in the last five, six years very drastically. And uh, this is according to statistics uh, retrieved from the Google Safe Browsing. Um, and on the y-axis, you can see the number of websites. And on the uh, x-axis, you can see the date. And uh, the phishing uh, websites increased, but the malware uh, websites did not. So we can understand that cyber attacks, attackers are more interested in uh, phishing attacks because they are pretty successful. If we look at this statistic, uh, which is retrieved from Statista, and uh, this uh, survey is done in 2020, uh, and 600 organizations were asked if they uh, had a successful phishing attack, if they experienced one, and more than 50% of them uh, said that yes, they actually experienced a, experienced a successful phishing attack. So uh, not only the phishing uh, attacks uh, become more and more, but they are actually very dangerous and uh, they are successful. And uh, the results of them are much worse because the, uh, those organizations uh, said that 60% of them uh, lost data, 52% of them uh, had credentials or accounts compromised, 47 of them were infected with ransomware, 20 of them, 29 of them uh, with malware, and 18 of those, 18 uh, percent of those organizations were uh, experienced. Uh, they experienced financial losses. So phishing attacks are pretty dangerous, and they need to be addressed as quick as possible. Uh, so, but before going into the solution, we need to understand the data specifics uh, to thoroughly do the data prep processing and uh, understand what features can help us uh, in this solution. Uh, the first thing that we need to understand is that we are going to work with both text data and image data. So uh, the problem bec becomes double. Uh, also, the same information can be expressed in different ways. Can be, it can be expressed, expressed with images, it can be expressed with text, and grasping the content, the context out of those website uh, components, it is a very hard task. Also, hidden details are seen only in comparison. 
look at this fake Google website. Okay, uh, you look at it, you think, okay, this is uh, trying to replicate the Google website, and uh, you understand that this is probably a phishing website. But you will not uh, think about this if you will not uh, know about Google, that, like the real Google. So uh, those comparisons are necessary, and we need to make sure that our algorithm knows about Google, the real Google. Um, also, uh, the texts in the websites are in different languages, and uh, you cannot uh, be uh, like your solution cannot be based only on NLP or only on the content because uh, you cannot co cover all the languages, and you will you will have a lot of gaps. Also, uh, some symbols in some websites are okay, and some uh, in others are not, and. A universal pattern uh, is very hard to understand. So, for example, a dog emoji can be very okay in a, a website that is all about dogs, but it, it cannot be okay uh, in a website that is about, uh, that, that is, a, for example, a login page for some social media uh, website. Uh, also, uh, some other data specific, the URL lengths. Uh, they cause, uh, in general, big problems, and we need uh, to make sure uh, to understand what are the URL lengths in our data set, because they cause zero feature vectors, about which I will talk later. Uh, also, the latency for extracting features from the website content. Uh, we should pay attention on it, because it takes a lot of time. Also, uh, messy codes. Uh, our model, our feature extraction, should not be based on the code structure because there are a lot of developers that do not uh, follow the designs of uh, main coding uh, styles and uh, you cannot uh, understand whether it is a phishing website which was done very quickly or it is a normal website. Also, phishing patterns always change. Uh, they are changing every day and we will see um, the metrics of our model and prove that uh, this is a thing. So after understanding the data specifics, we need to move on to the data preprocessing part. Uh, the first thing that we need to uh, pay attention to is making the URLs canonical. The data sets that you get uh, come in different ways. For example, in one of your uh, data set, you can have the URLs only domains. You can have very deep, messy URLs. And you need, uh, for example, uh, you can have the www subdomain in some URLs, uh, in some they are not uh, existing. And uh, you should make sure that they all uh, look the same and hence uh, reduce the noise. Because, for example, you, you do not need the information about the www subdomain. Uh, also, uh, you need to check the distributions of HTTP, HTTPS protocols to make sure that uh, your data is well balanced uh, because if you have a lot of uh, a, lot of a lot of URLs that have HTTPS protocol and they are all legitimate URLs, you will have a bias in your model. Also, uh, you need to check the distribution of the number of characters or the combination of those characters um, and understand what are the most common tokens in your data set. And uh, you need to pay attention on the URL lengths again uh, to make sure you don't have only very long URLs uh, and you don't have only short URLs. And also the depth of the URLs. Uh, you need to make sure, you need to avoid having only domain URLs or some only messy URLs. And then after checking this, you can remove the most common tokens, the most common things, uh, and considering them as top words. Uh, and then uh, go to the part of extracting content from the website uh, itself, going and scraping uh, those components. Uh, now let's move to the feature extraction. And after a good data preprocessing, after reducing the noise, uh, first uh, thing that we need to do is extracting features. The first approach that we thought would be very helpful was uh, lexical features. Uh, and uh, by saying lexical, we mean that uh, those features are only retrieved from the URL string. 
And for example, those features can be the URL length, the number of dashes, the number of some symbols. And uh, th uh, those, those features grasp the pattern very well uh, for the long URLs, but they do not work for the short URLs. Because for the short URLs, we don't have place for those features. And uh, we have very uh, many, we have many uh, zero vector, uh, zero feature vectors. We have a data scarcity and uh, we roughly said we lose data. So uh, we need uh, to uh, make sure that our features are not based on the URL length. That is why we think, we thought that tokenizing is a better solution. And uh, by tokenizing, we mean splitting the string uh, to different parts. For example, you can split by the protocol HTTP or HTTPS. You can split by the subdomain, by the root domain or the main domain. Uh, you can also split the different parts of the URLs. Or uh, you can split by some symbols and hence uh, grasp some words out of the URL. And after uh, tokenizing our URLs, uh, we should vectorize it, so our model will understand uh, those tokens. We should make them into the numbers. Uh, all of the non-vectorization techniques uh, work well with different models. Uh, we tried the simplest one, hot encoding. We tried word to vec TF-IDF vectorization, byte, encode byte encoding, and even we tried the encoding blocks of transformer uh, models. And, uh, in vectorization process, we should always uh, not forget about um, including the, uh, uh, the, 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 the weight of the tokens of two or more different tokens combined. And you can do this by uh, using the techniques of n-gram, skip-gram, uh, or you can add some uh, terms in the, in the prediction model that will describe the, 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 the effect. Uh, so, after uh, tokenization, we vectorize our URLs and fit to a neural network uh, and then understand if the URL is a phishing or not. But uh, this is all good, uh, this worked well and uh, pay attention on, on that part that it is only uh, using features from the URL. Uh, and why we are only uh, trying to uh, ha extract features from the URL? Because it enables a fast detection. Also, it needs a lower computational uh, power because we don't go into the website and uh, grasp uh, and like um, use a lot of computational power uh, to parse those uh, websites. Also, we uh, believe that patterns tell a lot, uh, but more sophisticated phishing attacks require more sophisticated solutions. Because there are some examples uh, that prove us that only by looking at the URLs, uh, we cannot understand fully if it's a phishing or not. So when we go into the website, for example, this first one, it's a really nice website. It has the HTTPS protocol. It has a very nice domain. But when you go into the website, you understand that this does not match the URL that it has. And in fact, this is the phishing of the uh, website from the right part. And we would not understand this by, uh, without going into the website. Uh, also, uh, we have the problem from the other way around, where uh, we have messy URLs, but we have legitimate uh, websites. For example, this one is the PayPal's official login page. Uh, it looks uh, messy from the first glance, but it is the legitimate one. So uh, we need to also touch the content of the website and uh, we should pay attention on the clickable buttons, uh, the URLs, the hyperlinks in it, and the, relation be the relations between those URLs, the original URL and the website content uh, to understand, to grasp those uh, fishy uh, components. And uh, the important thing that uh, we uh, should pay attention mostly on the relations, not the components separately. Uh, so these are good. We have our features uh, both from the websites, both from the uh, and and from the URL only. Uh, but there are some challenges in those uh, feature extraction, especially for the URL phishing detection, because uh, first of all we need to 
get the final URLs, we need to, uh, to have some responses out of those URLs in order to understand those features. Uh, and uh, in general, uh, requesting those URLs take a lot of time. That's why uh, in these cases, uh, we need to use asynchronous requests in order to uh, make, minimize the waiting time in, uh, in, uh, in, 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 uh, in these requests. So uh, a small piece of code that I want to show you uh, first, we see uh, the word async uh, in front of the dev uh, function. And uh, this means that we have coroutines, asynchronous functions. Uh, and uh, here we define a timeout uh, for our client that will make uh, the rec uh, throughout which we will make the request to our URLs. And then we open one client session. Uh, pay attention on this that we only uh, create the session once. So we will also uh, minimize the waiting time here uh, because if we open a client session for each request, it will take enormous time. So we open a one, uh, one session and uh, using the async gather function, uh, which is from the async library, uh, we start uh, getting those uh, URLs. Uh, also, I forgot to mention that the uh, client uh, that we are using is from IO HTTP, HTTP uh, library. Uh, now let's look at the other function. Uh, this is for getting those URLs uh, throughout this uh, client uh, session. So uh, IO HTTP uh, client session enables us to get those uh, URLs without having blocking processes. So uh, it will not block uh, the times when you have to wait for your response. So you just use the uh, IOHTTP's uh, get method and get your URL and uh, wait for your response without actually waiting, without blocking the other processes. So you can move on to, the, uh, to requesting the other URLs. And here in the next lines, I am uh, retrieving the final URLs uh, of my ori original URL. Uh, but you can put the scraping part here, so you will make uh, you will minimize the waiting time more. So it's nice we got the responses uh, from our URLs very quickly. And in this case, for example, if you have 100 URLs to request and the longest uh, response time takes around three seconds. Uh, requesting all those 100 URLs will take only three seconds. Uh, and after this, when we get our responses, we need to parse uh, those content, uh, this content uh, from our uh, responses. And uh, if we use beautiful soup library, uh, I'm sure you are all familiar with this. Uh, I have some tips that you can use to make it faster. The first thing I want uh, to mention is the soup strainer which is uh, for parsing only the tags, only the elements that you will need in your, uh, in your processing. Uh, and the second thing is the c sharded library, which is universal encoding character uh, detector, detector. And by installing and importing this, uh, beautiful soup will uh, become 10 times faster and this is also uh, claimed in the Beautiful Soaps documentation. Uh, also, you should use LXML as parsing, not the HTML parser, uh, because it is also uh, much faster. And a uh, last uh, thing that I already mentioned is asynchronous requests. You asynchronously requesting those URLs, uh, getting, uh, souping the uh, responses very quickly, and then move on to your uh, model. So our final model, our current model, is based on the uh, tokenization, vectorization, and uh, layers uh, and neural network. Uh, and uh, we are doing our model evaluation by two methods. The first one is false prediction monitoring. And also we are doing daily monitoring on open fish data set and fish tank data set. Uh, let's look at the uh, metrics we have. Uh, so this uh, chart is showing uh, the accuracy of our model starting from December 2021 uh, till August 2022. 
And we can see that the accuracy of our model uh, is around 95% on average for the whole time. Uh, we have, of course, bumps because patterns change, but still it is around 95%. Uh, also, if we look at the false predictions, uh, we again are around 95% accuracy according to our users. Uh, and we went live on March of 2022, and starting from them, we didn't uh, have uh, low, much low accuracies. Uh, you can also check our uh, phishing uh, URL checker on our website, easythemark.com, uh, and give your feedback uh, if you think that uh, this URL is uh, predicted uh, uh, well or not, and your feedback will be very helpful. So, uh, to summarize, we achieved complex uh, and successful uh, phishing detection solution with 95% accuracy on average. And we did this by thoroughly understanding the data specifics, by not ignoring them, uh, by uh, good noise reduction and data pre-processing and feature extraction and, feature, and using features that are not based on the URL length. Uh, also, uh, I want to mention that we are already half a year in production and we um, pursue this 95% accuracy for the whole time. And I want uh, to also mention that there is still a lot to cover in the field of cybersecurity for the ML. So uh, I want uh, to thank you for the attention and uh, thank our other contributors, Arman Davtian and Haik Halechian. If you have any questions that we will not manage to answer uh, now, you can ask uh, uh, by writing to my email. And that's it. Thank you. Uh, thank you for the presentation. I have a couple of uh, technical questions here. So for the URLs that you are taking. Uh, at the beginning, you must have the good URLs and the bad URLs to, to labelize, right? Yeah, uh, it's uh, all about supervised learning. All about supervised learning. So for training your, uh, your model or uh, your architecture, uh, what, what is, uh, from where did you get your, for example, the good URLs and what data set and what data set you got the bad URLs, for example, for the pitching uh, uh, mm -hmm. a phishing or <coughs> deformant URLs and stuff like this. What data sets did you use at uh, the beginning? We, we did not use only uh, one data set. We used multiple uh, data sets. For example, the famous one, Alexa data set, uh, the fish tank that open fi and open fish uh, I mentioned, and uh, several others that we also gathered. And uh, by combining all of those data sets, we got our final one, which is, uh, and uh, we have around uh, uh, the number of our uh, data set is around it's it's a six digit number so uh, we have a pretty huge data set for that okay um, another question okay you, you said you were using be a beautiful soup right for extracting uh, or extracting text or whatever from mm -hmm. that specific uh, URL right uh, for example, for one million rows or one million websites, how much time did it take for you to do so? Uh, we don't go much deep in the websites, uh, and also our current solution is based only solely on the URL. Uh, but uh, in our experiments uh, for the beautiful soup, uh, with the beautiful soup and scraping those websites, uh, it is uh, less than one second, uh, uh, and we go. Uh, only two pages deep, not very deep into the websites. <clears throat> okay, thanks to, for the talk. And I was wondering whether the like human given feedbacks are used for retraining of the model or not. Uh, of course, but uh, as they are uh, dumb, uh, as they, they are feedbacks feedbacks from human, and they can be uh, biased. Uh, we just use it uh, for testing, for further testing and uh, stuff like that. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Uh, so, uh, 
there are actually two questions. First, like how many data points did you have? And also the second one, do you do any uh, data augmentation in some engineered way, like taking a legit domain, domain name and adding some malicious request parameter to it, etc. cetera? Uh, the first question, we have a six digit number of our data points. And uh, the second one, no, we don't uh, augment our data because we have enough to train uh, our models. Okay, thank you.